All right, gonna be doing a yoga session focused on like hip opening. To start, we're just gonna stand on our mats and uh, start by just swinging our arms back. And as you do this, try not to just be like swinging your shoulder and socket, but try and when you swing back, move your entire shoulder girdle back along your body as well to really open up ah, the chest. Okay, then we're going to stand wide on our mats and we're going to lunge to the right then we're going to lunge to the left right left now when we come to the right we're going to swing our arm left arm overhead now go to the left and swing your right arm overhead try and get stretch in your side body for whatever arm is overhead. Okay, now we're going to stand with our feet wide and we're going to fold halfway in a wide halfway fold. Then you're going to fold down the rest of the way. You can place your hands on the ground if you want, or if you can, you can also interlock your arms. And then while we're down here, we're going to swing to the right, then swing our body to the left, and right, left. Then swing left and turn both your feet so they're facing the front. So you're basically in a lunge with your left leg in the front. And then we're going to rise up into a high lunge. And then we're going to immediately go into warrior one. And when we're in warrior one, our body is turned to the front. And as you turn your body to the front, at some point you'll feel this tension in your back leg, which is the right leg in this instance. And that tension is gonna prevent you from rotating further. So if you can only rotate, if you can't make it all the way to the front, that's fine. Just make sure that you rotate as far as you can so you feel that tension in your back leg and then we're going to go into warrior two and in warrior two same thing in warrior one actually uh, we want to be pulling with the outside muscles of the front leg to try and bring it in. So if I just relax my leg, it's going to kind of collapse 
inward, but I want to pull it so that the knee is actually going over the front foot as much as I can. And that makes these muscles work much harder, so that it makes the pose harder. Also, when these muscles are working, it makes it harder to stay upright. So actually, it's easier now to, if, if I'm pulling my leg out, it becomes like more natural to kind of round my back. But I don't want to do that. I want to try and keep a nice straight spine. And that's going to make this muscle back here work even harder. So that might end up resulting in the knee collapsing. So I'm just like kind of mentally switching between these two things, like thinking about bringing the knee over my ankle and then also making my spine straight. Okay. So we're going to return to low lunge. We're going to plant our hands around that left foot. We're going to go into plank and we're going to quickly go into downward dog and pedal out our feet. And then we're going to bring the right foot forward. So we're now in a low lunge around the right foot. And then we're going to raise up into a high lunge. Go into warrior one. Now warrior two, trying to think about those same notes as before, so using those muscles to pull the knee out. Okay, now we're going to return to low lunge. Planting our hands around our right foot, kicking back into plank, and then lowering our knees to tabletop. Okay, now we're just gonna do some cat cow. So round your back as much as possible, exhale. Now we're going to come into Cow, inhaling, exhale to cat. Inhale to cow. Then just switch between those a few times. Okay, return to tabletop and we're going to do circles with our knees one knee at a time so we're going to start with our right knee and we're going to kick the back foot up and then we're going to bring the knee out to the right side and then drop it down and now we're going to go the reverse direction so lifting the knee out to the right then up and back and then down. Now try and do that, um, but smoother, so in one motion. And again, so out and back, and up and back, and down, up and back, to the right, then down. So just keep doing those alternating between the two motions. And as you're doing this, try and keep 
your body as steady as you can. So try not to alter your spine too much to compensate for the movement. Try not the leg muscles be doing the work. Okay, now we're gonna set that down and do the other side. So first up and back, then to the left, then down, then left, up and back, down. Okay, now we're gonna stop. We're going to kick just our left leg out as if we were in plank with our just our left leg. And then you're gonna move your right hand a little more to the center, move your left hand to the far left side of the mat. And then you're going to uh, lower your back knee. <laughs> and then you're gonna pick up your right foot and swing it to the front. Now we're in lizard lunge. And um, try and press through your front foot. Try and like lean forward, actually put weight into it. And if you can like kind of press into the ground with that foot, then that's a good indication that it's like in the right position. So you don't want it to just be like um, kind of relaxed and dead. It's a kind of an active pose. So, see if you can lower your body a bit. Just making sure you're doing what you can to press and get a stretch in that right hip. Now we're gonna experiment a little bit with coming onto the right side of the right foot and like opening that hip up it's pressing pressing gently and as you do this try and rock your pelvis up and down bring that leg back and we're going to bring the other leg forward to do lizard lunge on the left side. Okay, now we're going to come onto the left side of the left foot, sort of push gently and rock through our pelvis. Okay, now we're gonna kick that leg back. Go up and do plank. You can go on your knees if you need to. Then we're gonna go up to downward dog. We're gonna pedal again. And then walk our feet forward. 
So we're in a forward fold. Then we're going to roll up. And we're going to bring our feet so that our toes are as wide as our mat. The heels are going to be in a little bit so our feet are on an angle. Then we're going to lower down into a low wide squat. And once we're in the squat, we're going to shift our weight to the right and to the left. And just keep shifting between left and right. You can try and adjust a little wider if you want. Then we're going to rise up, shimming our feet back in and go into a forward fold. Then we'll roll up. Now we're going to turn so that we can place our feet even wider before uh, than we did last time. And actually bring your feet together. So we'll start with this. So our feet are going to be touching, standing straight. And then we're going to bring the heels out and then bring the toes out. Do it again and again, one more time. And then just adjust your toes so that they're wide. And now that should be a good width. Okay. And from here, we're going to start with our legs straight, standing up in a wide mountain. And then we're slowly going to lower our center. We're eventually going to try and get parallel, uh, like get our thighs parallel to the ground, but we're going to get there slowly. So first just lower a little bit and then try rocking your pelvis and seeing how your hips feel because it's possible one hip is much tighter than the other. And if you just dive bomb straight to the bottom, you'll end up quite lopsided. So you want to experiment as you go down. Okay. Now we're going to go a little lower. And I'm always, when I'm getting into this pose, I'm always adjusting my feet a ton. I don't know why, it just seems natural. <laughs> it just seems like I can just, or so slightly get a better position. And so I want to do that. Okay. So now we're going to try and lower to parallel. I actually like can't really even tell if I am, <laughs> but <laughs> I think I am. Uh, and this might be a pose where you can only sit here for a moment and you're like, oh my God, it's so tiring. So feel free to come up and down out of this as you need to. As we're here at the bottom, we want to try and keep our body straight as much as we can. Straightening your body is going to put a lot more strain on your hips, similar to what I was talking about earlier in the warrior poses. 
and also the knees coming in and out is also the same kind of thing. So straightening your torso is going to make it so your knees cave in. <laughs> so you're negotiating these two desires, goals against each other. So you're trying to bring your knees out and then you're also trying to keep a straight spine and you're just going to be constantly bouncing between those two. So if you're taking a break, try and come down into it. And try and get into some deep breathing. It is one of the more challenging poses. Then we're going to stand up. And then we're going to bring our feet together again and forward fold. And then we're going to rise up. Place our feet at the same width as we had earlier, nice and wide. In a wide mountain, and we're gonna go into this pose again. This is horse pose. I think it's like the best pose for sedentary people. It's like the best way to gauge where you're at in your progress because like this ability to activate your hips and keep a neutral spine is like exactly the thing that is diminished by sitting excessively. On the other hand, this might be a very challenging pose. You only want to try once in a while and things like warrior will build your strength for this pose. So there's easier, ways to increment your progress. But it's good to at least try it. Just gonna stay a few more seconds. Then rise up. and shimmy our feet in. Then fold over, forward fold. And then we're gonna lower down and sit and uh, turn so we can put our feet the long way on the mat. And with our feet straight in front of us, we're going to try and sit tall. And we're not gonna fold over, we're just gonna stay here. Try and find a tall seat. And to do this, I'm actually like activating my leg muscles quite a bit. Like these are pulling, my core is engaged. This is also a surprisingly challenging pose. We're going to bring our right foot into our left elbow crease. Then we're going to pull that leg in. We're just going to stay here for a moment and experiment with um, squeezing the right knee in. Squeeze that right knee in using your right arm. And as you do that, notice how, of course, your right hip is going to get tighter. And now we're going to try and see 
how tight we can get our right hip using just our left arm and our right foot kicking into it. So put your right hand on the ground and see how you can replicate that tightness using just these together. And what I end up doing is kicking my right foot, pushing it into that crease, and then I pull the crease in. I find I can really pull my right hip that way or pull on it. Um, okay, so with that in mind, we're gonna put our right hand and elbow down behind us and we're gonna rest on that. And then we're going to start rolling onto our right hip. And then we're gonna use that ability to adjust the tightness in the hip that we just practiced to find the right tightness so that we're getting a good massage without being so tight that we're just hurting ourselves. Okay, now we're gonna come back seating. We're going to do the other foot, so left foot into right, elbow crease and just experiment with things for a second again and then we're going to go into the massage leaning back onto our left arm and then rolling over our left hip Okay, now we're going to sit with our legs in front of us. We're going to lie back. We're going to lift our legs, grab either our thighs or our feet. Grab the feet if you can, and then we're gonna come into happy baby. Okay, then we're going to um, roll over. <clears throat> we're gonna face the right side of our mat. The left side would be fine too, just face one of the sides. Then we're gonna start widening our knees out so we can come into frog pose. And we're gonna start by just rocking back and then forward. Of course, when you rock back, that's when you're getting the deep stretch. It's a good way of just sort of testing things out, testing how deep feels right. And just like prodding your limit for a moment and then coming out of it. Okay, now we're going to stay. We're gonna push back and stay back. And if you'd like, you can also lower your front body either just on your forearms or sticking your arms all the way out.
Okay, I'm going to crawl out of that and <clears throat> slowly bring your knees in little by little until you can get them under you. Okay, now we're just going to sit down, cobbler's pose, and then we're going to keep our feet together in this cobbler's pose, but we're going to lie down for recli reclining cobbler. So this is the last pose, just try to relax everything in your body if you can. Okay, so that's the end of the session. Thanks for joining and have a nice day.